Okay, today we will take a few minutes and look at assemblies. We'll start with an assembly of the mallet head and handle because it's only two parts and it's pretty simple. And then we'll move on to assemble the whole project if we have time. An assembly will be a new standard IAM. And then I need to bring parts in kind of just like I did when I did title blocks. I want to go to place, not place from content center. So I've got to change this to place. And I want to bring my parts in one at a time. So the first thing I'm going to bring in is the mallet handle. And one is already in there. So I'm just going to right click and click OK. And then I want to bring in the mallet head. For this one, I'm going to have to left click, now right click, and hit OK. And now I've got a mallet head and a mallet handle in here. Okay. Notice I can't move the mallet handle. If I look over here, I see a stick pin. That means it's a grounded part, and that part won't move. Okay. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. Up here, I've got my constraints for how to stick things together, okay? This is how we'll keep things from moving. Uh, anytime you've got a round part or a hole, it's relatively simple. I can use an insert constraint, okay? So insert is the easiest of all of them. I'm going to come here, and I want this round part. I can see the axis. I want to click on that. And then I like to rotate so I can see what I'm doing. I have to go right click OK to get off my rotate tool. But you can see down there that's the bottom of the hole and you can see that axis. So if I click, it's going to go into the hole. Now, you might also be able to tell that right now it's upside down. So if I go ahead and click right here, it should flip it around. Okay. Now remember, my threads on mine were a little bit too long, and that's why I can see mine sticking out. It's really not a big deal, but if you did put your threads in the correct way, then you should be okay. So once I've got my two constraints on there, I'm just going to click OK. And now you'll notice these are locked into place. The only thing that can happen, though, is it can spin, which is one thing that happens with an insert constraint, and we're really not all that worried about that. Okay? Let's take a quick look at the more difficult part, which would be the whole uh, pegboard assembly. So I'm going to start a new assembly again, and I want to place all my parts in. Typically on an assembly, you're going to bring in the biggest base part first or the main part of an object. So that would be the pegboard top here. So I'm going to click on pegboard top. There's already one in here, so all I've got to do is right click and click OK. Now, I'm going to bring in all the other parts. So I'm going to bring in two legs, okay, or ends, whatever you call them. I need one, two, and then I right click OK. And I'm also going to bring in my round peg. I'm just going to left click, right click, OK. I'm going to bring in the square peg, so that'll be a left click, right click, OK. And I'm also going to bring in the triangle peg, and that'll be a left click, right click, OK. Guys, this is the most confusing part of Inventor, is the assemblies, and the order in you click things and how you click things is, is what makes it difficult. So. You sometimes have to keep an eye on your browser bar and exactly what you're clicking on to get things right, okay? Let's start with the easiest piece, and the easiest piece is always something round. Last time we did that with an insert. This time, I'm going to go to Constraint, I'm going to click, and it's set up on Mate, and Mate is what we will use for almost everything. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to mate the axis of this piece, so I'm going to click here, you see how the center axis is lined up, with the axis of that circle. So I've got to hold over it until it lights up. I'm going to click OK. So now that's locked in axis to axis.
okay. That's the only way that can move. I will have to flush the tops later, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm going to slide those out of the way just a little bit so we can see our square, which would probably be the next easiest part. Basically, what I've got to do is I've got to mate two adjacent sides. So I've got to take one flat piece and stick it to another flat piece. And then, like the next side over, I want to stick that together. So sometimes I've got to do some rotation and things to get this to work. So watch me go constrain. I'm still on mate, okay? I'm going to click this side. Now you've got to visualize. Where is that supposed to lock into? That's supposed to lock into right over here, right? So now that arrow is pointing back at me. I'm going to click. And I'm going to click OK. I could click Apply, but I like to click OK because now I'm going to slide this over just a little bit so I can see that next side I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to Constrain. I did this side last time, so I'm going to come over here to this side. Notice I've got the flat face. I'm going to click it. I'm going to rotate so I can see where it's supposed to go. And I'm going to come back over to the face it's supposed to match up with. I'm going to click OK. Now you'll see this is locked in the same way that the circle is locked in, correct? Okay. So the triangle is the same process too. I just want to do two adjacent sides and how they lock into each other. So back to constrain. I'm still on mate. I'll do the bottom of the triangle. To the bottom of the hole for the triangle. I'm going to click OK because I like to slide this out of the way a little bit so I can see again. Go back to Constrain. I'm on Mate. I want, I'll rotate it so we can see it a little better. I want that edge and then I'm going to rotate it back so I can see which face it mates up to. And sometimes it helps to zoom in also. I'm going to click OK. So now all three of my pegs should be locked in except for the up and down movement, okay? And you really want them to be locked in so they don't move at all. So there is a different uh, kind of mate that we can do, and it's called a flush. So if I go constrain and I look at mate here, we've been at mate over here also. But if I change it to flush, and then I click here and here, it locks those two together. If I want that peg to stick out, I want to play with my offset here. So let's say 1. That went the wrong way, so I'm just going to put a negative sign in front of it, and I'm okay with that. So watch me click OK. Now this part shouldn't move. Okay. So now, I'm going to just flush this one to that one. I'm going to hit apply. And now I can flush this one to that one also. Apply. Those are all locked in then. Okay? If you look over here, if I hit in my browser bar, It'll show you all the constraints, and if you hold over them, you can see where they are. So if something's wrong, you can go back and delete a constraint just like we did a lot of those other things, okay? Let's look at the ends or the legs really quick, and then we'll be done. Sometimes these are confusing because of the way they kind of flip around. And they will eventually move to the right spot, but sometimes it's a little bit funky when you do these. What you can use is you can use like a rotate component right here. So if I want to click this and click here, then I can kind of get this set up. You see how that now is lined up a little bit better with how it's supposed to be, right? I just kind of lined that up. Now what I want to do is go back to my assembly. I'm going to start by constraining the inside of this dado joint here to where that's going to match up with the edge of the pegboard. 
like this. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to slide that out of the way. And then I'm going to constrain an adjacent side. So I just did this side. So why don't I do the top? And the top will match up to this top right here. I'm going to click OK. And now you'll notice, how does the leg move? Just back and forth, right? So what do you think I need to do to finish that off? Yes, I'm going to go ahead and constrain, flush it. This edge to this edge. I don't think you guys probably need to see the other one go on there. Uh, but if you do, uh, let me know as you're going through the process. Like I said, it can be pretty confusing. Uh, but hopefully this video will help you get going.